Alright. Let's go and deal with some plot. Uh, sorry, Emily and Tronny, I'm gonna need you to, uh, step away for, uh, reasons. Do the party members level up with you in real time? Pretty much. Like, like, if you were to do a bunch of quests with with Jern and Apollo, would they start catching up? Yes. Huh. But I, I don't know exactly what the mechanics are, because there's, there's some senses in which uh, your party members actually get the actual EXP that's actually dropping from the actual enemies that you actually fight. And also they kind of tend to catch up on their own to an extent. And it reaches the point where, like, if you if you have items equipped that change the EXP that you get, you can uh, distance yourself from them leveling-wise, and that can get weird. But they pretty much follow you pretty accurately. Also, there's a lot of explorable terrain in this room and absolutely nothing on any of it. I really don't know what the deal is with any of it. Alright folks, it's time to manually figure out a cheat code in-game in real time. This is a sequence that I have feelings about, and it might shock you to learn that a lot of people don't like this, but I think it's actually fine. So here's what's happening here. We've got to go to these rooms, and we've got to make a bunch of very particular movements. And we get told when we've entered the track, and we get told when we fucked up. Otherwise, we get told nothing. I mean, it seems like a pretty straightforward node maze. Or at least that one did. Yeah, there are, there are others. A bunch of this is basically just reverse logicking. Somebody designed this, but it was designed so that somebody could be told about the secret and then repeat it. So based on that, you kind of have to figure like, okay, given what's in this room, what actually are... What's in there that we could make parameters out of? And it usually boils down to walking between or around the right objects in the right order. And that's basically it. You do have to trial and error it, but it's not very long, so it's pretty manageable. Anyway, uh, as you uh, can probably infer from the fact that we're, uh, we've dismissed our friends and we're tracking down the secret place, it is once again time to actually engage with the plot of CrossCode. Uh, we're about to learn some things, so uh, given that our available body of knowledge is once again about to shift radically. Would you care to volunteer any uh, pointed speculation about any particular part of this or where it might be going at this time? I mean... If not, I have things to ask as well, so go ahead. I mean, not really. I mean, I mean broadly speaking, this whole everything seems to be the the whole Evotar thing, which was complete overkill for the game, but, you know, Satoshi was like, but they're my babies, so we're gonna do it anyway. Like, I suspect that's where a lot of this is going, but I... I, I mean, we haven't had anything that even remotely relates to the plot since, like... No. What? There has been absolutely no movement since Vermilion Wasteland. So, so yeah, it seems a bit odd to ask where things are going when we have the exact same amount of plot information that we did almost, what, 10 hours ago? 15? S something like that. 
It's true, the pacing is a little bit weird, but uh, honestly, I think the intention is just to give it some time to breathe and see if anything occurs. Like, it seems pretty striking that there doesn't seem to be a point to all this Evo 12 business, but there must be something, right? So, maybe a thing pops up. What do you make of the of our blue avatar friend? Well, the god one? Hmm. Eh. Any ideas about him? I don't remember enough about the, the real people that we've seen in the uh That's fair. From from that are ostensibly the uh the Crossworld devs, I do suspect that he is one of their avatars. Hmm. Alright, here's a spicy one. Uh, it was speculated a bit earlier. And by speculated, I mean like in-game. Sergei said that there must have been some way that the bad guys were tracking us. Care to take a crack? at this conundrum. I feel like at this point, with everything that's gone down, I would be more surprised... I would be more surprised if Sergei is on the level than not. Hmm. Well, all of the answers to some of these questions might be forthcoming when we get to uh, whatever the hell it is exactly that we're going to find in this place, which uh, you may recognize. Oh, hi Shizuka. Oh, I really wish you hadn't just said that, Jizuka. Like, I have a modicum of respect for you, but now that you've said that, I am going to have to personally atomize you. I'm really sorry about this. This is, uh, I gotta say, one of the highlights of the game, and uh, I went to some effort to produce an entertaining take. And I personally... I'm gonna take the approach of just sitting back and watching. Because I think the proceedings here largely speak for themselves. Needless to say, uh, she's a knows all the tricks. She's got all of Apollo's bullshit. She knows how to play the game. And she's got all the techs. So that doesn't seem to be helping her a whole lot. No, because I know them better. More importantly, um, I'm trying to entertain a bunch of strangers on the internet. So uh, I decided that absolutely nothing less than a fully featured exhibition match, showing off several high level approaches would be acceptable here. What does stun even do as an ailment? It just means that uh, she's not going to do anything particularly offensive for the next couple seconds. It's, I think it's just a, a, an artifact of being countered. Oh, you remember I said I was going to show off Karma Scale at some point? That's what happens when you actually manage to land it. I'm pretty pleased with this. The only reason I let that round go on so long is because I really wanted to actually show Karma Scale. 
and that means we actually have to let her get some attacks off. I'm a little disappointed that uh, glitch time into Song of Storms wasn't the kill, but that just means I get to land one last big hit. Sit down, Jessica. Unfortunately, Jessica, like us, will never log off. I regret to inform you that we're now uh, PvPing for all of the rest of eternity. Sorry. We uh, maybe didn't think this one through. You know, I'll give her credit for that. That's uh, that seems like that, that that's one way to handle this. Yeah. As long as you never stop the duel, we're never allowed to leave. It's a solid strategy, and I have to respect it. I tried to do this round only using low-level techs, and I made a pretty decent go of it, but then I kind of embarrassed myself at the last minute by uh, messing up the dodge on that, but I still managed to avoid that whole attack, so uh, maybe it's not such a problem after all. Oh, well, hang on a minute. I got two levels from this. We also get a trophy for, uh, well this is a bit weird. The trophy is for finishing a complete duel. Uh, as you notice, we eventually get cut off. The number of rounds you're allowed to fight kind of depends on how much you're winning. Like I've seen this go on for like, for over nine rounds. So I, I think it's just how much you're winning that determines it, but it's not quite set in stone, the limit. One of life's little mysteries. Uh, speaking of mysteries... Open to speculation as to what IDN stands for. But uh, never mind that.
I would like to make an observation at this point. Uh, you might notice a running theme going through all of this. Of... Satoshi just kind of being a complete fucking idiot? Like... D I feel like I'm taking crazy pills here. D did nobody think that any of this was a tiny bit suspicious? Going in. My personal favorite is when he was explicitly told over and over that no, we're not going to do this. And then he went to, and then he found a mysterious benefactor who coincidentally was able to assure them a spot within Crossworlds where nobody would bother them, not even entertainment. And he was just like, yeah, this sounds legit. Hmm. So yeah, let's learn what's happened since then. And by that I mean, let's also learn that Shizuka is also just kind of a bit of an idiot. Like, come on. This time around, this time around was doing a lot of heavy lifting in that sentence there, Satoshi. You think? The one difference between the two of them is that uh, I, I feel like Shizuka kind of got dumped into this situation by matters that uh, kind of in the periphery of her control, whereas Satoshi, they, this... This is all his fault. This is... yeah. Literally, <laughs> pretty much all on you. Literally, everything about this entire situation can be traced directly back to Satoshi and his refusal to get the hint that they didn't need the fucking Evotar system. And even if he was determined to continue it, the way that they went about it was like. Ugh. See, I'm a little bit confused about the chronology here, because there was the whole original incident in which uh, Shizuka fucked everything up by barging into the room and being like, hey, you're an AI, surprise. And that kind of caused its own complete breakdown. I don't know if the implication is supposed to be that they were able to reset that by doing the complete memory wipe and then this other thing happened. But, uh... Yeah. This has turned into a complete clusterfuck. Anyway, despite everything, uh, Satoshi takes this opportunity to at least attempt to be the adult in the room and get the two arguing children, well, the one arguing child, really, to please just 
get with the program. I mean, I can understand why Shizuka would be a little upset about this whole, uh, everything. Hmm. It's not like I have no sympathy at all for her. It's, it's, like, it's like I said, like, this... There was a whole bunch of stuff that got dumped on her, but at the same time... She's been, uh... Mm. By the way, you can absolutely come to this spot in the prologue. There's, there's nothing here, but there's also nothing preventing you from just walking to the right and just jumping over here. Just a fun fact. Also, like, seriously, were you guys password sharing or what? I feel like letting people just log into your crossword account was kind of a... Maybe not a great idea. I wonder if Crossworld bans people for account sharing. I feel like I would be more surprised if they didn't. Like I said, I have a tiny bit of sympathy for Shizuka. Okay, well I called that then. All things considered, the suspect pool was... I'm gonna go ahead and say Phoenix right tier in size. Does explain a lot though. So yeah, back to this issue again. Sergei is saying he's got suspects. What do we make of that? And what is with this enormous pile of postcards with answers on them that's piling up around me? Anyway, we get uh, a whole bunch of encyclopedias at this point for uh, decently obvious reasons. But we're not done yet. There's a couple other things to clear up. 
before we finally log off. I gotta say, I love the, uh... How nonchalantly he does that. It's like, alright, we gotta go find this secret entrance. And then you take, like, two steps off the path, and he's like, wait, I found it. Hey, when you're looking for it. Who knew that there were two secret spots in the Sapphire Ridge? Would have been the last place they'd have expected to see it. Yeah, this is kind of the other elephant in the room. Uh, yeah. Sergei's the only one here thinking about the big picture. Yeah, so like, okay. I'm not even sure what we are doing by going to the server, but like, we get there, and then and then now what? Do we shut it down? Or I guess I guess Sergei Sergei wants to copy the data off of it, yeah. but then again, okay. Now what? What are you gonna do with it? Well, I mean, that turns out to be a really good question, doesn't it? Which I guess we're, uh, gonna have to think about. Anyway, one last stop to make. Sergei has an idea. And I gotta say, Sergei's record for having ideas is a lot better than Satoshi's.